What's up guys, it's Frog for Dog. I need a new smartphone. My Pixel 7 Pro just isn't cutting it for me. So today, I finally did something about it. I made my way to the local service station and picked up a brand new smartphone. That smartphone being... The Telstra Essential Smart 2.1. This beauty of a smartphone only cost me $29, and that includes a prepaid SIM as well, so not only do I get a new phone number, a new SIM card, but also a brand new phone, only for $29. I'm so excited to crack into this and see how good my new phone is, but let's go over some of the features first. I don't actually know much about this, I kind of just walked in and got it without really doing any research, so we're going to be finding out just how great this thing is, well, together. Starting off at the front, we have a 5 inch FWVGA Plus display. Is that basically a really complex way of saying that this is like 480p? I'm going to assume that this means full width VGA Plus display. Eh, who knows. It's got a 5 megapixel rear camera and a 2 megapixel selfie camera. So I can rest assured knowing that this can be the new Frock product camera. On the front here it says recommended for rural handheld coverage. So if you're just randomly in the Australian Outback, you'll be rest assured that this will pick up signal. No it won't. <laughs> it supports 4GX, which is just 4G, but a little bit faster or LT for the Americans watching the video. If we look at this side, oh my god, look at all these features. We discussed these three features on the front of the box, but the phone also has Bluetooth, an FM radio, 32 gigs of internal memory, which is expandable up to 256 gig. This immediately makes it better than my Pixel 7 Pro simply due to the fact that it has an SD card slot which my current phone doesn't, which is kind of funny. So this thing can have more storage than my current phone, which is kind of sad. If we look at the back, we'll see what's inside. So we've got the handset with the battery. Could you imagine if they sold the battery separately? We've got the charger in the box. Same can't be said about other companies. There's a headset included and a USB cable. There's an activate guide, whatever that means manufacturer's warranty card, a mobile recycling card, because they know that within two to three months, you're going to be needing it. Here's the dimensions and the weight for those who care. Oh, I was right. It is a 480p display. It's got a quad core 1.4 gigahertz processor, which is just super powerful. I don't think there's much else to do besides, well, to just tear this thing open and see what's inside. It sounds like everything's really loose in there, by the way, so hopefully this isn't broken. I didn't get a receipt with this. They, they didn't give me one. Open this up. Ooh, okay, it is in its own little segments. Um, yeah. Oh, and there's still more in there. There we go. All right. Here we go, so the phone is actually made by ZTE, and this is how you recycle the phone. I'm going to be needing this very shortly. Here's my brand new Telstra SIM card, here's my ZTE limited warranty, and also my activation guide, yay! If we look in here, we have the battery by ZTE, so yeah, clearly the smartphone is made by ZTE. It's a 2000 mAh battery, and it was made on the 15th of March. 2023. This phone has been sitting around for nine months, so, you know, in the womb for, we're not gonna say that, and it was just waiting for me to come and buy it. We have the charging brick, which, you know, same can't be said for most smartphones these days. You could probably calculate how much watts this is, I actually don't know how to do the calculation, and yep, made in March, so this phone's been sitting around for a while. Oh no, please don't tell me the phone takes micro USB. And here are the earphones, check these things out. Clearly there's only one hole, because if you look at the Apple Buds, which are actually a very similar shape to this, they usually have another hole here. I definitely am going to try these out later, and who knows, I might see if I can blow them up like a Dank Pods episode. And here's the phone itself. We're going to take this out gently so we don't break it. So here's the phone with the screen. It's a fully square screen. You know, no curvatures here. It comes with this protective film included and you take it off with this little tab. Honestly, I'm gonna leave it on. I'm gonna keep this thing absolutely pristine. Here's your volume rocker, your power button. Here's that five megapixel back camera with a flash. 
and here's the Telstra logo very proudly printed on the back. And it's actually got this really nice pattern on the back. I kind of like it. Although this does look like a $29 phone. Well, I think it was actually $50 off, so it's usually a little bit more expensive. All right, let's have a look. The top, oh my God, it's got a headphone jack. Why didn't they advertise it on the box? Even modern phones don't have this. If we look on the bottom, is that the microphone? It's probably the microphone. And if we look on the right side, oh, that's where the charging port is. Why would you, yeah, whatever. Let's compare the size of this phone to an iPhone 12 mini, and they're actually about the same size. Yeah, this would be a very, very reachable phone. However, I find the lack of weight means that you might fumble this thing around a little bit, but hey, if you break it, literally just buy a new phone. So in order to get this battery in, we're gonna have to take the back off, which yes, this thing has a removable back. That thing just sounds like quality. If you wanted to know what this thing actually is, it's a ZTE Blade A30, just rebranded to be Telstra. Here's where you put the SIM card and your micro SD card. We should probably put the battery in. Let's, let's take a look at this thing. Let's open this up. Ah, the battery. How's it already scratched? Who did this? And we basically just take this, plug it in like an old Samsung phone, take the back and just slap it back on. And look at that, our phone's now ready to go. Without further ado, let's turn on the phone. Wow, the battery's charged. Oh, Android Go Edition. I've never actually used Android Go Edition, so I don't know how good it is. But we're gonna find out together. Wow, what a nice Telstra boot screen. So the screen on the phone looks Fine. Actually, no, I was about to say it looks fine, but my god, does that ever get washed out? Okay, yeah, so if you try to look at it from the bottom, yeah, it just goes completely washed out and it goes inverted from this angle. Let's press start. Connect to a mobile network and nuh -uh. Skip. Mmm, yeah, the haptics feel and sound great. Oh, look at that, it's keeping up with my typing speed. I like how there's a down arrow and a back arrow that's probably to hide the, yeah, it's to hide the nav bar, and then how do you get it back? Oh, you swipe up. I might actually grab the included micro USB cable and plug it in, because this might take a bit. Oh, this thing is nasty. The cable's very thick though, but it really likes to just <laughs> hold its shape. Yeah, how cool is that? So if I try and stretch this out to be normal, yeah, it's very springy. And of course, we plug it into the uh, micro USB cable on the side of the phone like this. Ah, oh, yes. Love those sounds. Yeah, we really do have to wait a while for this thing to just want to activate, so we'll be right back. Oh, no way. This thing's got gesture navigation. Well, I have to scroll to see <laughs> the options. That's kind of crappy. Look at that. You know, you could just not have the white bars here and you could just widen this up a little bit. If you look at it off angle, oh wait, where's my options gone? Oh, where's the screen gone? You know what, we're gonna try gestures. I wanna see how good the gestures are on here. Let's, uh, all set. Let's press the all set button. Cause that's the button, we, that's the only button we can press. All right, swipe up on the home screen to view all apps. Wow, look at that. We've got Assistant Go, a calculator, a calendar, a camera, Gallery Go, Mail Go, Google Go, Maps Go, video, voice recorder, weather. What? Hold on a second. You're trying to tell me this thing running Android Go has a weather app, but my Google Pixel 7 Pro didn't come with a weather app. What are your priorities, Google? I'm actually going to take a look at the weather app. Weather notice. Weather provides better weather forecast services. This app needs permission to access location. Let's reject. I don't need it to... Oh, really? We're actually going to deny the location because y'all don't need to know where we're at. So this is either a weather app made by Google or loaded on by ZTE or Telstra. I don't know. All I know is that this is very much like Apple's. Let's actually get that open real quick. Here's the Apple weather app in comparison. I've got night light on, so that's why it looks like this. And you can see it's, yeah, pretty similar, but it just looks like crap on here. 
Hmm, which one's a knockoff of who? I wonder. It's not even displaying New York's weather properly. Can I just set a better country? What? No Adelaide? Is this thing even connected to Wi-Fi? Yeah, Adelaide, South Australia, all these other Adelaide's suck. So let's do this one. Oh, look at that, Adelaide, South Australia, 15 degrees. I mean, it functions as a weather app. At least this one has one. Google. So let's swipe up to go home. That doesn't feel too shabby, honestly. I mean, if we try and do the gestures, honestly, this feels fine. It's doing it. You can swipe between the apps, just like on most phones, it's freaking out a little bit. Skipping some animations, but other than that, I'm actually really surprised that this is gesture support. Oh, we can take a look at the camera, see how great the camera is. Let's deny, we don't need geotagging. I hate geotagging in photos apps. Uh, okay, yep, star capture. This looks exactly like the iPhone one. Again, how many times am I gonna have to pull this out of this video? Hmm, I wonder which one's a copy of who? It's almost like they're exactly the same. <laughs> Alright, looking at this, uh, it's just your general washed out Android camera. We're gonna do an actual camera test a little bit later, but... Actually, I wanna see the front facing camera. It looks immaculate. I'm just gonna say that much. Look at this. It's actually gonna be really hard to take selfies, considering just how washed out the screen gets the moment you take it off axis and the polarizing layer just goes completely to crap. Also very surprised that it has the little animations like iOS when you swipe home. So it's actually kind of good that they've implemented that, but also it runs like crap. It's dropping frames while it's doing it, but hey, it's at least got it. Scheduled power on and off, that's interesting. Oh, I love the delay between me trying to do the back gesture and when it actually happens. Android version 11, so there you go, it runs Android 11. Can I update this thing any further? Let's find out. System update is under advanced, I don't want you to update this thing. Why does system update need to access my photos? Allow. Alright, oh look at this cool animation, it's checking updates on my Blade A30. But, but, but I thought this was a Telstra Essential Smart 2.1. Anyway, um, yes, this thing's got an update, let's, let's update this thing. Let's update this thing to the latest version. Who knows, maybe this thing can run Android 12. Oh, love that notification sound. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of the things we can do on this phone. Let's start off with something simple and easy. Let's go with something pre-installed, such as YouTube. YouTube is a very good way to see the performance of a device. If it can, you know, play back 1080p video, just general media consumption. It's a thing people do. You're doing it right now. Well, it seems to be playing the ads at least. Let's go onto, yeah, let's deny. Search on YouTube. And you can see, again, the screen quality. Very hard to record this. Let's type in Frock for Duck. Uh, it didn't quite get it. And that is a really massive ad, but hey, hey, there we are. Let's tap on my channel. All right, so we're gonna watch the latest video, which is the Windows 11 on Lumia 950 video. Let's not watch the TikTok ad. What will perform better, Android Go or Windows 11? I actually don't know where the speaker is on this thing. Is, is it really the earpiece? Oh, let's find out. What's up, guys? It's Frog for Duck. You guys may have seen the video where I installed Win- Oh, well, would you look at that? Higher picture quality is apparently 240p. Also, this is the speaker. We're gonna be doing the same thing with a Lumia 950 Excel. Now I know what you guys may be thinking, of uh, Frog for Duck, aren't you just retreading the exact same video over again? Well, yes, but actually no. I'm actually going to be comparing the performance of Windows 11. I think it's actually pretty embarrassing that even at 240p, it's still dropping a frame here and there. That's a bit, like, come on, man. So yeah, the speaker sounds absolutely nasty. The screen is barely even visible, especially with how washed out the screen gets as soon as you turn it off angle just a little bit. But honestly, it works as a really good like privacy filter for your phone, where if you need to do some secretive stuff on your phone, then other people next to you will have a much harder time seeing it. Which, let's be real, if you're getting a phone like this, it's either all you could afford or you're doing some shady, shady things. And hey, maybe that could be a built-in feature, built-in privacy. It, it just looks like crap. So, hey, for video playback at, uh, let's see the resolution it's playing back at. Oh, okay, it's doing it. 720p 60. 
and that's as far as you're going to get on here because it's quite literally a 480p screen, but it's doing 60 frames. But even then, just general navigation is just kind of just kind of sucks on this thing. While we're talking about media consumption, I think it's a good time to try these things out. These are the buds that are included with the phone, and don't they just look absolutely incredible. Let's start off with the volume low, and let's see how this sounds. It actually blocks out quite a bit of sound compared to Apple's earbuds. Let's play the video. I'm gonna say right now, the audio is severely delayed to the video. Yeah, it sounds very bassy and muddy. That's all I can really say. It just sounds very, very muddy. I want to play staircase.wav. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's it's not good. There's not a lot of anything. It's just a lot of the mids and bass. It's very, very muddy. I want to see if I can get you guys to hear this. So yeah, safe to say, these things don't get very loud, not very powerful. I'm gonna try plugging them into my amp later to see what happens if I try and give them some more power, but we'll see how it goes. This phone's also getting- oops. <laughs> this phone's also getting quite a bit hot on the top, but so is the Google Pixel that I'm filming with, hence why it's back down to 30 frames per second right now. No matter how much you spend, if you're at the bottom tier Android or the top tier Android, your phone's gonna <laughs> overheat it seems. To test out the image and microphone quality, we're going to film a quick little video on the phone. What's up guys, it's Frogfordog, and this is an iPhone 12 mini, and as you can see here, it's just way too big for me. A really cool thing about this phone is that if we look up close to it, you can kind of see, you can kind of see, right, that's, that's the weather, that's the, that's the time. And that's the Face ID scanner. This is something that you can only see with a camera because it's infrared light. Mmm, gotta love that autofocus. Yeah, let's just say uh, one may not be performing as well as the other. <laughs> I've also taken some other sample shots outside, so let's take a look at them. And that is the image test. Personally, I feel that this thing completely blows my Pixel 7 Pro out of the water. Just look at these shots. But enough about the camera. I think it's time to really put this thing to the test. We're gonna see just how powerful this guy is by playing some video games. I've got two video games on here that should absolutely push the performance of this phone to its limits. Flow Free and Crossy Road. Hold on, let me just get a bit of a better angle on this. Yeah, now you guys can really see that well. Let's start off with Flow Free. And you guys may be asking, um, why would you even bother with a game this simple? Well, the answer itself is also pretty simple. Because if a device can't play Flow Free, then... Honestly, it's kind of pathetic. Let's take a look at this. Let's go Free Play. Wow, there is a loading circle. I'm not sure if that's because it's the first time running the game, or if it's like, loading an ad, or if it really just takes this long. Yeah, never mind, it's Google Play Games interrupting. Thanks guys. What the hell? What the hell? Okay. Um, this is completely unexpected. W what happened to the text? It's just basic text! What? Okay, I was gonna say, that was really weird. Let's press the classic pack, and let's see... How well this game runs. Now let's see the performance of the riveting gameplay of Flow Free. What was that? Did you, did you guys see that? I let go and it was just like, uh, that's strange. 
Okay, bit, bit of a delay, bit of jitteriness. Let's uh, try and go fast on this. What was that? <laughs> Actually, what, what, what was that? Why is it like auto-completing it for me? Is that like an actual thing it does? Ah, Android back gestures. Honestly, it felt fine. It just kind of felt like there was a bit of a delay between everything I was doing. It didn't feel the best, but it was performing good enough. And let's swipe up. And wow, you can see the delay between the game and going home. It's not the best. Yeah, you can see if you try and uh, open and close apps like you can do on modern phones, it doesn't really like doing it. Yep, there is a bit of a delay. So don't expect to do multitasking on this phone. You will bring this thing to a crawl. And yep, now I've balked it. Awesome. <laughs> All right, POV. You are seven years old, and this is your first ever phone. You need to pass some time, so what will you play? Crossy Road is here to save the day. We're gonna play in landscape because people who play Crossy Road in portrait kinda scare me a little bit and should maybe be put on a watch list. And to your age, let's do... Okay, even if I was a child, I'd probably say 99. Let's continue. It's also been a while since I've played, so I'm just trying to see what changes I've done to this game because it's already a little bit different. You can see the inconsistency of the blue on the screen. This is literally a solid blue. And yep, you can see just how bad it looks. Let's check out these 3D graphics. Changing the volume. Whoa, the shadows disappeared. Oh my god, look at that anti-aliasing. Look at this. Look how crusty everything looks. Okay, wow, it's actually playing at like 60 frames. Oh, never mind, it's dropping frames. Oh, oh, yeah, it's lagging. It's lagging real bad. Oh. Can it stop trying to add in the shadows? It's clearly not able to handle it. Something's so time sensitive, like the logs. Having it lag like this probably isn't the best idea. Yeah, and also it's hard to see because I, I can't see anything. Oh, that death animation's taking a while. Mmm, very responsive. Let's do conserve battery, that might help out. No shadows. That might make the game run a little bit better. You know what, it is handling it, but again, not very well. Yeah, okay, right, yep. Please no kill- Ah, oh, damn, it's also missing half the carriages too, so. Oh, it's also not rendering the game properly. And now for a segment I like to call blowing up the headphones, aka Walmart dank pods. All right, so this here is my topping MX5 amp slash DAC thing. Pretty much this is what I use to run my headphones. This thing can run like 300 ohm headphones really easy. Let's take this skinny headphone cable and plug it into this really nice adapter. You can see just how um, unfit for purpose this looks and let's plug it right in. But what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna increase the gain. So we're gonna do gain high using this nifty little remote. All right, we're gonna try a random video here that apparently is meant to blue speakers. And we're gonna try, let me see how it sounds for this. Also, I have an extension that lets me boost the volume on YouTube. So let's see how this goes. It's had to actually enable the extension. So let's press boost volume and let's see what this sounds like. Oh my God. Oh my god. Oh, I can smell it. It's making... I can actually smell something coming out of it. Oh, oh. Oh no. Oh, that's not good. Um... Okay, my DAC did not like that. What? I thought it would only blow up the headphones, but not the... Well, the headphones are really hot. Um, let's just try turning this thing off and on again. Holy crap, I can't even turn it off and on again. Alright, let's... Let's, let's unplug this and plug it back in. Hopefully, the DAC's not dead. Okay, right. I think I think it might just be protection to stop it from dying. Um, okay, well my speakers are working. My speakers are working just fine. So 
I think it's just protection for the headphones. I don't know if I'm actually ruining my DAC doing this, but yeah, these things are still really hot. You know what? Let's do it one more time. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, immediately it just errors out. So I wonder what that is. HP, error HP. It seems like anything below like 20 to 10 hertz immediately causes this thing to um, actually go into circuit protection mode, which is really good because, you know, it protects the good speakers and headphones you're plugging into it so they don't get blown up. But when you're trying to use it with something like this, um, yeah. So good on you for having circuit protection and stuff, but also I, I kind of wanted you to blow these things up and it was getting really, really close to doing so. <laughs> oh, and let's see how long these things can last. The smells from the headphones are getting like, oh, it's so hot now. It's so hot. We're getting really close to absolutely nuking it. Oh, look at it go. It's getting so hot. <laughs> Get your brother here as well. Oh, that one's boiling. All right, I think that's enough trying to blow these things up because that just keeps airing out and these things are like burning hot to the touch and they smell really bad. I did just kind of want to see what sort of um, result I could get out of it using the equipment that I have and quite frankly, it was pretty respectable. Awkward transition back to the outro. Yeah, it's not keeping up at all. Let's put this thing out of its misery and... It's still playing sounds. The phone's also getting extraordinarily hot as well. Touching at the top here is very hot. Um, yeah, it does not run very well. In a desert island situation, it's fine. And really, that's probably how I'd mostly describe this phone. For $29, in a desert island situation where you just need a phone, a phone, you need to talk to someone, you need to text someone, you just need general basic communication. This pretty much does like 80% of what most smartphones do. And it's genuinely actually usable. If you needed a phone and you only had $29 to spend, it's honestly not the worst thing in the world. Though that being said, at that price, you could probably go on Facebook Marketplace and find something like a Galaxy S5 for 20 bucks. I've literally bought an iPhone 6S for $5. I'd probably try and take that 20 bucks and try your luck on Facebook Marketplace. The phones aren't always that cheap, but sometimes you might just be able to luck out and actually get something that's a pretty good equivalent and actually get something really good for that $30. But also, if you need to give your kids a phone and you really don't want to give them a phone addiction, give them this. They're not going to tolerate using it for more than five minutes. Or maybe not. I mean, I got addicted to Minecraft back in the day playing on an absolute toaster running at like nine frames per second, so anything's really possible. So yeah, for 29 bucks, honestly, it's a lot better than I expected. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not a good phone, but also, at the absolute basics, it's completely fine, just a little bit slow. And there we have it, that is the $29 smartphone. Anyways, my name is Frock for Duck. you can say however you want, I really don't care, new videos whenever I want. Be sure to become a channel member like all these people on the screen have for some bonus content and also just to support me. Starts at $1 a month and goes up to absolutely ludicrous prices. Just depends on what kind of perks you want, I suppose. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.